best. This example is about you know, what to do if you have data that have both trend and seasonality. Uh, trend and seasonality. So uh, here, what is the data here? Data consists of TV set sales. You know, how many units of TV, how many sets uh, have been sold in thousands of units for a particular manufacturer for the past four years. And uh, TV sales varies uh, from season to season. Uh, you would expect, like in the cold month, uh, you would expect to see more TV set sales. In the warmer month, maybe people are more concerned with outside activities, so uh, maybe they, were, they don't buy many TVs. Uh, and uh, what else do we have? I mean, of course, a big consideration is the holidays, the Christmas holidays where people give gifts. There's lots of sales. So people give gifts to other people and also to, you know, to themselves. Uh, so it's like there's this big shopping frenzy that goes on during the winter months. Uh, so that was, should also always be taken into account when we try to forecast the sale. Okay. So how do we know that the, uh, the data has trend or seasonality? The simplest thing is to graph the data, make a chart of the data. So here's the data. Let's see what this uh, is about. So you see here four years of data, four years of data, and you have the, these units or thousands of units here, and you have the four quarters you know, for, for each year. So first, let's try uh, plotting this data. Let's try plotting this. So let's see, we could go. Uh, I think the uh, line chart would be enough. A uh, line chart, just to, so select, just select this part. Maybe, oops, let me try again. Just select, uh, maybe start with a Y, just so we have some kind of label. Uh, so Y and then select the, the yellow highlighted cells with the data. And then I'm going to go insert. And then the, this little thing here is just supposed to be line chart. And I'm going to go with this one. OK, so you could see here the picture of your data. OK, so you could see in general uh, the trend is increasing. And that's good. And also you could see there are these little cycles during the year. So let's see what happens. First, you got um, first quarter. And then it goes down, second quarter, and then up, and then up. Okay, and then down, down, up, up, down, down, up, up, down, down, up, up. So it's always like down, down, up, up, I know, for each year. So you can see there is some kind of seasonal pattern going on here. So you want to take into account the <laughs> both the trend and this kind of seasonal pattern into account as you extrapolate your data into the future, so as you try to make forecasts. So here now, the goal is to make quarterly forecasts for year five. So in the year five, which is supposed to be the future year, okay, what are these four values? What are, what are the estimates of the uh, sales for these four quarters? Okay. So that's what we're going to do uh, today. And um, there is a summary of this. So we're going to use a uh, regression. We're going to use the multiple regression we already learned before. Uh, so we're going to, we already know how to use regression to do the trend. Uh, okay, so we use the intercept and the slope functions to do a trend projection. But that one only had one independent variable. So we said, okay, sales depends on the time period. So time period was the independent variable and the sales was the dependent variable. In this case, uh, this is going to require multiple regression because besides the time period, which tells you the trend, there, are, there is also the quarter. You know, what quarter am I in? So what quarter you're in depends, uh, well, that's going to influence your sales. If you're in the uh, you know, peak demand quarter, like in the holiday season, uh, that is, uh, that is you know, if you're like here, you know, quarter four, like quarter four, quarter four, then your sales will be higher than usual. If you're in the quarter two, like here, then your sales will be lower than usual. So that has to be taken into account. To do that, we need more variables, not just the time period variable in our regression. Okay, <coughs> okay so it says here, now, uh, so quarter would be a variable, like which quarter you're in, one, two, three, or four. Uh, now, um, uh, the problem is, the problem is that the quarter is, is really a categorical variable. Uh, quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, four, quarter four, uh, these are numbers, there's one, two, three, four, but these don't actually represent some meaningful quantity. You're not actually measuring anything. It's kind of like you're saying, 
okay, if you're a man, you know, you are gender number one. If you're a woman, uh, then you're gender number two. You're just assigning numbers. You're just assigning numbers to something that's not really a meaningful quantity. Uh, so, uh, if you, so you don't want to just use a quarter number as a kind of variable in a regression. In regression, you need to, uh, all the variables have to be, you know, quantitative. They have to represent some amount, some meaningful number. Okay, like time period is meaningful. It's you know, years, year, one year, two year, three year, four, and that the, those numbers have some meaning. Okay, but quarters, one, two, three, four during the season, you could have called it something else. You could have said, well, uh, you know, the uh, spring quarter, fall quarter, uh, you know, winter quarter. So you could just call it like four seasons. And so co but by calling quarters one, two, three, four, we are not actually saying these numbers represent some meaningful quantities, but these are just codes uh, for these categories, like uh, four seasons. Uh, okay. Uh, so when you have a, a categorical variable that, that doesn't really represent some uh, real quantity, what you need, what you could do is to use regression. You could uh, kind of translate that into some other variables uh, that are uh, quantitative. Okay. So this is where these dummy variables come in. So you're going to make up these other variables that are quantitative that we could use in regression. Okay, so how it works is, so in place of the quarter number, one, three, four, we're going to have, for each quarter, we're going to have a variable. So for quarter one, we're going to say, okay, here's a variable, let's say Q1. And it's going to be either one or zero. So if I'm in quarter one, then the value of this variable, Q1, would be one. Now if I'm in quarter two, then I'm gonna have another variable, Q2, representing quarter two. So I'm gonna say Q2 <coughs> is equal to one. And so this is kinda how it's going to work. So here are three new variables. Three new variables, these are again called dummy variables because they're just kinda fake variables uh, that we're making up. So quarter one, Okay, variable is going to be one if you are in the quarter one, and otherwise it's zero. And quarter two, that's another variable. Okay, it's gonna be one if you are in quarter two, otherwise zero. Or quarter three, again, one or zero, depending on whether you're in, in quarter three. So we are gonna make up these three uh, new variables, new variables, and uh, wait, wait, what about quarter four? Well, quarter four, we're going to represent it by setting all, the, uh, all these variables equal to zero. So if we, we're gonna say if quarter one, two, three, all these variables are equal to zero, that means I am in quarter four. So you just need a way to represent, you know, by, by using these variables, uh, which quarter you're in. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to set up these three. We set up these three columns for these three variables. And then we say, okay, I'm in quarter one, that means uh, Q1 is one, Q2 is zero, Q2 is three is zero. If I'm in quarter two, so then Q2 is one and the other variables are equal to zero. Quarter three, I said Q3 equal to one and the others are equal to zero and Q4, quarter four that means all the variables are Q1, Q2, Q3, those are all equal to zero. So which means by default, you know, quarter, well now I'm in quarter four. So quarter four is kind of like a baseline uh, category. If all the, other, all the variables are equal to zero, that means automatically we're in, in quarter four. So this is how we're going to represent uh, the data. Uh, then we have the time variable, of course, as before. So what we have is we're going to have these four variables that help us, to, uh, that help us predict the sales. So Q1, Q2, Q3, and then the time period. Uh, time period. Uh, that just goes, runs from uh, one through I think one through 16, from one through 16. Okay, so we set up these variables. So there are one, two, three, four independent variables. There are X variables that will help us predict the, the sales. So basically that's an overview of how this is going to work. So what we do is, uh, we're going to go here and then say, um, hmm, let's see. That's year one, quarter one. So I just assign one. So I just enter one here. And then I move to the next cell, put zero, and then zero. Okay, so that's it, one, zero, zero. Now I move to the second row, and uh, that is in quarter two. So I have zero here, and then one for quarter two. 
then 0. And then quarter 3, that means quarter Q3 will be equal to 1. The others will be 0. Okay, and quarter 4, uh, everybody is 0. And so Q1, Q2, Q3, they're all 0. Okay, now the time period is just going to go from 1 through, you know, 16. So I'm just going to put 1, 2, and then just copy it down. So I just select both, so I could copy it down. And to here. Okay, so I have 1 through 16. Okay, and, um, and now this pattern is going to repeat every year. Okay, so, one zero, so this part. This part is going to repeat every year because each year you have four quarters. So you could just copy this and, and paste it onto other years. So I just select this and then copy. Go to the first part of the second year and uh, uh, paste it. I just, I just control V to paste. And go here, control V to paste. And then last one, and control V to paste. So now I have defined these three variables, these three columns. Now what we're going to do is we want to get a equation in this kind of format. Okay, so I want to get something like this. Uh, I want a multiple regression equation. Here's my forecast I want to come up with you know, for year five, for year five, you know, quarter one, two, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four. Uh, and uh, here is going to be my intercept. I'll call it B sub zero. And here's a coefficient for quarter one, coefficient for quarter two, quarter three, and quarter four. So what we need is we need these one, two, three, four, five values, these five coefficients, actually one intercept <laughs> and four coefficients. Uh, so that's where we could use that linest uh, function we learned about before. And once we do that, uh, we're going to get an e kind of equation like this. Now we just have to plug in numbers uh, to make forecasts. Okay, uh, so uh, let's see how we would use this. Uh, once we get the equations, once we get this equation, you could say, okay, now I want to make a forecast. A forecast for year five, let's say the first quarter. So here, this part will now be equal to one. And quarter two, the other quarters will be equal to zero if you're in quarter zero, in quarter one. Now T will be, well, year five, quarter one, what is that? One, two, three, four, five. Uh, T goes, okay, T, T goes from one to four, five to eight, and so forth, 12, 16. And uh, so for here, it's gonna be 17, 18, 19, 20, right? So time period uh, so will be like that for these years. So you start with the 17 here. So T is 17, you know, four years past times four quarters, is 16 and then you add one to it. So it's 17, so you plug in 17 here. Okay, and then if you just work this out, you have, well, 6.069 minus 1.363 times one. So that's over here. And then the, the others are equal, the, uh, these two terms are equal to zero because anything multiplied by zero is zero. So that's a here. Okay, uh, and then uh, 17, you plug it into here times 0.146 as you see here. Okay, so 600 and then minus 1.363 and then zero, zero plus this value which is 2.482 and that gives us 7.188. So that's how we would make uh, the prediction. Okay, so now let's go ahead and actually calculate, uh, you know, come up with this equation. Okay, so we're here. Over here. Uh, so we want to eventually put the coefficients here uh, to make the forecast. I set it up just uh, here. Uh, just to remember that, uh, to help us remember that the Linus function will give you the coefficients in a reverse order. Right? It goes from B4, B3, B2, B1, B0. I put the headings here to remind me and, and to remind you. Okay, so, so remember what we do is you, for, you will highlight. Okay, first highlight the five cells uh, that will receive the coefficients. Okay, then we type the function. Okay, 
line st st uh, and it's nice that it reminds you <laughs> what to do it says first you put in the y's and then the x's uh, so y column and then the x columns so i'm gonna go to y column which is whatever you're trying to forecast so i'm gonna go to sales so just the values just the, the yellow part the yellow cells okay I'll go to sales okay uh, and then comma and now i gotta put in the x values so x values are the other variables, the variables we're using to help predict. Okay, so that means one, two, three, four, these four columns. Quarter one, two, three, and then time period. So down to 16. So D11 through G26. Okay, then you close the parentheses. Now what is the important thing you need to remember? Right, control shift enter, right? Don't enter, <laughs> don't just enter. So you gotta hold down control button, the shift button, and then hit enter. So control shift and then enter. And then we're, you know, fill in the, all the five cells. If I just hit enter, it'll just give me <laughs> one number uh, in the first cell. 